Dear students, welcome to yet another online tutorial on principles of communication system. This is Anu, uh, course instructor of PCS for fifth semester B section. So, in previous few sessions, we have seen what is a switching modulator, and in last session, uh, we have seen uh, some numerical examples of uh, amplitude modulation, uh, namely standard AM and uh, like single tone AM. Right. So, uh, in this session, what we'll do is we'll see uh, the multi-sim live simulation of a switching modulator an envelope detector right and also uh, we'll uh, try and visualize the spectrum of a single tone am using uh, matlab online right so uh, being able to use uh, the uh, tools such as multi-sim live matlab and geogebra are one of the course outcomes of this course that's why uh, i'm uh, posting this yeah, like i'm using this offline session to introduce you to uh, multi-sim live and matlab online right so geogebra we have used we have seen geogebra simulations in uh, previous classes just to visualize uh, um, am signal right so we'll straight away start with the switching modulator right and uh, the envelope detectors as you can see so this part is a switching modulator it is one of the simplest methods to generate uh, an am signal and we have uh, seen uh, the working and mathematical modeling of the switching modulator in detail so switching modulator as we have seen it essentially consists of a diode and a resistor right and uh, the message signal m of t and uh, the carrier signal c of t are fed in series to uh, the diode and a resistor combination right so and we have seen the c of t should be uh, much greater compared to m of t and uh, we have uh, we have even seen this diode resistor combination can be approximated as a piecewise linear uh, system if c of t is much much greater compared to m of t and we can say this diode will switch on when c of t is greater than uh, zero and it will go off when c of t is less than zero right but in fact there will be a cut in voltage ideally you can see in the simulation there will be an, a cut in voltage of around 0.7 volt right so i'm not going into details of the circuit explanation for that you can see the previous video which was posted right so now here i have considered a message signal a sinusoid uh, with a 500 millivolt peak amplitude and 200 hertz frequency right and its phase is considered to be zero degree and the carrier i have assumed it is almost four times greater than the message that is 2.10 volt amplitude and the frequency i have taken to be 5.8 kilohertz right so now let us simulate and see what happens so this is the uh, this will be the output of uh, the switching modulator right so to visualize output in multi sim live i should take a voltage probe right and I am placing it here now. I'll simulate so that we can see uh, maybe uh, the switching modulator output. I'll split the screen so that yeah. So you can see this is the switching modulator output. So maybe I can see only the show only the waveform, or else yeah maybe we'll have the split view so that I can uh, explain parallelly. Right. So only during uh, the uh, P potential at p side is greater than potential at n side this diode will be conducting and at that time we will get m of t plus c e of t at the output right that's what you can see and otherwise this diode will be off so you can see here right so it allows it, it is either off or positive right uh, that uh, working we have uh, seen in detail so now uh, we have actually verified it using multi sim live and you can see this uh, m of t plus c e of t will be equal to 2.1 plus 500 milli so it will be 2.6 volt but uh, there will be a drop across this diode right there will be a drop across this diode 0 0.7 so 2.6 minus 0 0.7 so we are getting almost the maximum value to be equal to 1.9 volt which is yeah 1.9 volts so which is correct according to what we have uh, right theoretically predicted right so that is the um, switching modulator part right so now we will see the envelope detector so this envelope detector it is uh, one of the very robust and simplest techniques to demodulate an am wave right 
so uh, actually I have one more thing which you have to keep in mind is this is not the AM wave as such right this uh, switching modulator output the voltage across the resistor R1 as such is not the AM wave we have seen we should pass this through a bandpass filter with center frequency FC and bandwidth is equal to what bandwidth or which allows the uh, frequency range from FC minus W to FC plus W or FC minus FM to FC plus FM so we have not done it here right so if we had done that we would have uh, got a AM wave that which was uh, actually what all the, which, uh, the mathematical expression of which was obtained in last class or it Please refer previous video for that detail, right? But not a problem. Now what we are going to do is we are going to feed this as such to an envelope detector, right? So an envelope detector again it has a diode. Actually, what a diode does is it clips off the negative part, right? The, the diode which connected in P N, right? It clips off the negative part, and followed by we have an R C filter. If you see, this is a low pass filter, right? So what happens is this diode, if we give uh, the modulated signal here, right, it clips off the negative part. So what we get will be something like this. Only uh, if uh, negative part of a modulated signal is clipped off, something like this only we'll be getting, right. So the switching modulator output negative part is already clipped off, right. So maybe what I'll do is I'll show uh, the working of uh, this envelope detector along with the uh, ring. Uh, modulator right which we'll study in next sessions right so for the time being i'll be uh, considering this as such as a, a modulated signal right and we'll be feeding it to this diode so and this diode what it does is it clips off the negative part and what happens is whenever this diode is conducting this capacitor will charge through the forward resistance of the diode and of course, uh, that uh, the charging time constant will depend on the capacitance, the forward resistance of the diode. And if you are considering this entire thing as source, the source is internal resistance. Right? So those things will uh, decide the charging RC time constant. So the uh, diode will charge, the ch a capacitor will charge right when the diode is forward biased. And when the diode is reverse biased, the capacitor will discharge through this resistor. Right. So it's just like what you have learned in uh, like a rectifier. You have already learned rectifier in first year and even in second year. Right. So it's exactly the same thing. So this can uh, bring back the original message signal. So that's uh, envelope detector is uh, as simple as this. But only thing which you have to keep in mind is while designing, right, so this charging time constant, right, it depends on the forward resistance of diode, the capacitance, and of course the uh, internal resistance of the source right and the discharging time constant depends upon this capacitor and R so that uh, how to design that maybe in next live session we'll discuss we'll discuss with that right so now we'll just see how what output it gives right so now I'll take another probe right another probe so this is a blue uh, color probe so the signal out will be blue in color so I'll just simulate it and what we should get back we should get the message signal back right we should get a 200 hertz so if you remember the message signal is a 200 hertz sinusoid a 200 hertz sinusoid we should get back that right oh, the envelope right the envelope we should get a signal which is exactly like this envelope so we'll just see simulate and see whether we are getting this yes so you can see here if you see only this blue signal right i'll see the story. right so as we told during the uh, positive half cycle diode conducts and at that time capacitor is charging right and uh, when the diode is off the capacitor is discharging it is charging discharging so uh, this signal this green signal is getting converted into this blue signal of course there is some ripple right maybe uh, by further uh, low pass filtering we can eliminate that uh, ripples or by designing this R and C values properly we can have a, a perfect uh, envelope without any uh, ripples so that is uh, the envelope detector so this envelope detector part so this is how uh, I, I uh, multi-sim can be used to verify the circuits we'll be using it extensively even for ring modulator all those things we'll be using I've already made this 
a multi sim live simulation uh, link available in canvas i request everyone to try out with that right so with this we'll end the multi sim live part and we'll move on to the uh, matlab uh, simulation of visualizing the spectrum of single tone am so that program also yeah we have i've, I've made it available so i'll be using matlab online right uh, for this so just give me a second right yeah so i'll be using matlab online for this right i have already uh, like returned the program uh, and i'll uh, demonstrate it with a live uh, simulation right so uh, as you all are aware right multi sim cannot take continuous values as such so we uh, whatever if you are mentioning sine wave or square wave it will be considering samples and those samples joined together will give a feel of a continuous signal that's what uh, the uh, matlab does so i'm not uh, going into going deeper into that those aspects so I've, as i've considered the samples as 100 right or sampling frequency as 100 and i'm defining time axis right so we'll be considering time from say uh, yeah, 0 to 1 at uh, interval of 1 by 100 right so okay fine so that that's about I'm not uh, discussing that part so we'll concentrate on our uh, like modulation part so I'm assuming carrier frequency to be 20 Hertz for visualization right and the message signal I have defined as sine 2 pi times 5 T so the messages message uh, frequency is 5 hertz and carrier frequency is 20 hertz and i have considered here message amplitude to be equal to 1 right so now this uh, modulation double sideband modulation or standard am modulation right with carrier right can be uh, done or performed in matlab using this inbuilt command am modulation right so this is an inbuilt command in MATLAB. So this it performs AM modulation, right? So where the message signal will be X, carrier frequency is FC, and the sampling frequency which we have considered is actually what 100, right? And uh, this is the phase of the carrier. This is the phase of the carrier, and this is the amplitude of the carrier. As you can see, we have not dis defined a carrier signal as such. We have defined only carrier frequency, right? So carrier signal, its initial phase and amplitude, all those things we have to mention within this right, as an argument of this uh, uh, function, right? So A mode, and we are just plotting it with respect to time, right? So that is what you can see here, right? You can see here with, within uh, one second, you can see there will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20, uh, cycles of carrier and this is the envelope as I have considered only like uh, right a very less number of samples if I increase the number of samples we will get this waveform even better right so this is the standard AM signal right and maybe I'll just uh, like run it once again right so that yeah so this is the standard AM signal and the one which is appearing here this is the spectrum of standard am signal so now we'll just analyze what should be the spectrum so we have it on the right hand side as well right spectrum we have we do have here on the right hand side as well right so uh, how did i upload that spectrum Sp a spectrum to upload the spectrum i have used actually what uh, function or inbuilt function a ds from uh, dsp system toolbox that is dsp dot spectrum analyzer right so i have uh, Define this func function. I have, to, uh, I have to write DSP dot spectrum analyzer. I have to mention the sample rate, sample frequency, and whether I need a double side spectrum or single side. As we as we have seen, we we are uh, using double side spectrum. We are considering both positive and negative frequencies. As I need a double side spectrum, so this argument plot two sided spectrum is true. If you give it as false, we will get a single sided spectrum. And uh, this y axis I am limiting to. Oh, you can see 0 to 40 from 0 to 40 y-axis is limited so that is actually what SA so now we are obtaining uh, the spectrum right of this y double 
right using this uh, spectrum analyzer function right and we are plotting it that's what is being done here step uh, sa y double so we are getting the spectrum so you can see the carrier frequency is carrier frequency is 20 so you can see two impulses at plus 20 and minus 20 right and uh, the message frequency is 5 hertz so we will have one at 20 plus 5 that is 25 right fc plus fm upper side band and fc minus fm lower side band so in negative side also we have minus fc plus fm and minus fc minus fm so this is the uh, spectrum so instead of this if i change uh, say if i change the uh, carrier frequency to say 30 and if we simulate once again let's see what happens right you can see the uh, like yeah first we'll see the uh, modulated signal of course it has within one second duration there are there will be 30 uh, carrier cycles right and now the spectrum has shifted to 30 and minus 30 and we have 30 plus 5 35 and uh, uh, 25 right uh, as upper and lower side bands right so now we'll try and see the uh, carrier uh, frequency we'll try and change the carrier frequency and run it once again so just see let me, it's just for us to visualize so then the spectrum you can see here yeah you can see the spectrum is at 30 and uh, upper side band is 40 hertz lower side band is 20 hertz 30 plus 10 and 30 minus 10 so our aim was just to verify this in a problem we have uh, discussed in detail how uh, the spectrum can be actually what manually plotted and what will be the magnitude levels right so you can see there is a slight actually what mismatch in fact the upper side band and lower side band magnitude level has to be same but there is a slight mismatch why because we are considering only sample certain samples of a continuous signal right it's not the entire signal if we change the number of samples you can uh, like even have a better result but if you change the number of samples what will happen here is there will be a more frequency uh, like contents at times popping up right so for the time being i uh, would like uh, you to appreciate this whatever we have uh, learned in theory we have verified it here right so even this code i have made available in canvas i request everyone to maybe try out with this so here uh, you should not have a confusion the magnitude is given in dbm that is uh, like decibel in milli so what uh, you have uh, so maybe in, in detail how to get uh, how to convert actually what a uh, power level into dbm like maybe in next live session we'll discuss in detail right so till then uh, that's all about uh, this uh, today's session so i request everyone to try it out and also watch all the uh, previously posted videos right before you come to the next uh, online uh, session on saturday thank you thank you so much